This is one of those fly rabel twos. Look at that. July 4th died. We know where we're playing July 4th weekend. Minneapolis. You know, when I was younger, I used to think this was so cool. I still think it's cool. It's pretty cool. Because I can do it. Can you do it and then switch hands and still do it? You, do it, you can do it with your left hand. Yeah. You want to see? Doing it with your weak hand is, is something that I still kind of struggle with. Is that how you would do it? Kind of. Something like that. God, this thing actually slaps. It is so nice. Look at the ball just sits there. Wow. Did you ever play with that one? No, I was always like ready to bust it out for All Star. Actually, I was going to use it for All Star, and then I got injured. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, should we do the state of the week? Yeah. I need to get this mic. Today we're going to talk about the Hall of Fame we announced. We're going to talk about the back half of the schedule that was released and how you can get tickets. We're going to talk about our champion deal jerseys, and we're going to talk about. Eric and Nardini on our board. I have a question. What's up? When does Brett Roberts get a seat on the board? <laughs> Gee. Gee? You gotta pay those dues. You're the first colleague who's ever asked that. Wow. So that means I'm... Ballsy request. <laughs> that means I'm first in line, right? <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna get a trending hashtag B-Rob on board. All right, let's do it. All right, three, two, one. So I was thinking about how to bring us into the inaugural classes, Professional Lacrosse Hall of Fame. And timing is gonna be a little tight. I think they're getting out of practice right now in upstate New York, Syracuse. Actually, they're down in Baltimore. They're getting ready to play Johns Hopkins. We've got Gary Gate here. I'm gonna give him a call. Hello, you've reached Gary Gate. Please leave a message after the tone. At the tone. Please record your message. Gary, it's Paul. Just wanted to uh, say two things. One, good luck this weekend. I know you're going to be at Homewood Field with Coach Petro. And then number two, I wanted to congratulate you again on being a part of our inaugural Hall of Fame class. Um, you know you have been an inspiration for me and so many. And uh, we deeply appreciate all that you do for the sport and continue to do for the sport. Especially the air gate. You know what I'm talking about? All right, Gary. Talk to you later. It's Gary Gate, everyone. <laughs> okay. All right, here we are. After two years of deliberating and building the structure for the inaugural Professional Lacrosse Hall of Fame class, we put together a committee that was selected. We put together criteria and we announced the first 11 players, which I'm going to read off to you in just a second. But the criteria we wanted to get right. So the first thing is you have to be nominated by a Hall of Fame committee member. And the second is you have to have 75% vote to get in. How do you get nominated? You have to play five years of professional lacrosse. So that allows us to dig into the 20 years of archive history of the MLL. So one of the things that you heard about was Dave Petromala, who never played in the MLL. Otherwise, he would have been a shoe in as our inaugural class defender. Um, certainly was one of the best, if not the best ever. Gary did play. Gary played well into his early 40s. And he is a GOAT, no doubt. Gary GOAT. And some of the other players that had to play five years. You also have to have been retired from professional lacrosse for at least three years. John Grant Jr., for example, has been retired for three years, but they've been in consecutive. And that's pretty much it. And each year there will be 11 players. So one specialist and then the run of play, which is 10 players. And the specialist was Paul Canabine. I'll go through the rest of them off the top of my head because how could you forget them? These are all legends of the game. So attack, we had Casey Powell, we had Mark Millen, and we had John Grant Jr. At midfield, we had Gary Gate, Jay Jalbear, and Matt Striebel. At defense, we had Pat McCabe, John Gagliardi, and Nikki Polanco at goalie, we had the great one, Brian Doherty, otherwise known as Doc, and I told you about our face-off man, Paul Canabee. Uh, so it's pretty amazing for the league to be able to do this. You know, one of the things that I thought a lot about when we were building the PLL is just how much history is in professional lacrosse that for a long time just went unacknowledged. And we even worked really hard this past off season in tipping the cap to players who decide to retire. Um, it's difficult when you're in the offseason and players are all over the country, in some cases all over the world, and they're making their announcement on a whim, but our social team sits in tight, our graphic and production team sits in tight, and we go, okay, how do we recognize Drew Snyder? 
how do we recognize Joe Walters and give these guys the respect that they deserve because of how much they've done for the game? And maybe one day those guys will be a part of the Pro Lacrosse Hall of Fame as well. Dear Lacrosse, since I first picked up a stick 29 years ago, I fell in love with you. I never wanted this day to come, but my time as a player has come to an end. Let's talk about this upcoming season. All right, in the last day of the league, we talked about the first six venues that we unveiled, stopping at the All-Star Game at Gillette Stadium. Now we announced the back half of the schedule, so the eight venues. A couple of things I want to call out. One is the selection criteria. We talked about in the last state of the league. You can rewatch it if you want to know what goes into it in its elaborative process. But we started at 120 cities, we boil it down to 30, and then we pick our 14 weekends. There's one repeat venue this year, you'll find, and that is at our quarterfinal site at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. But the greater New England, highly dense lacrosse audience is going to get two games at the same venue. It's the first time the PLL is doing that, so we get to explore you know, recurring ticket purchasers or our version of a season ticket or multiple ticket purchaser to the same venue. We also get to learn about what works and what doesn't at that venue and correct it pretty quickly in that season. So that's going to be foreshadowing of the future of the PLL potentially. We always want to learn and innovate. The other one that's really important is that five of our eight venues on this back half announcement are new. So, without further ado, here are the eight markets. We're gonna start with Fairfield, Connecticut. Fairfield's super dense and highly populated with lacrosse players. We've looked at those venues in the past but haven't found a fit until now. I'm excited about the next weekend, which is in Frisco, Texas. We're calling it Dallas, but it is the star. So it's the Dallas Cowboys practice facility. It's actually where uh, the Dallas Rattlers played in those last two seasons of MLL. Beautiful indoor venue, seats 10,000 people. It's gonna be packed and it's gonna be loud. DU, so in Denver, which is a huge lacrosse market for us, a smaller venue, so we're gonna pack the house. Denver is huge. And then we're going back to where we were during the championship series in Utah. It's a beautiful venue in Salt Lake City. It's called Zion Bank Stadium. And we're excited to be back, not only in, in Utah, uh, but where we had our most successful season yet, which was during a pandemic, head down and taking lacrosse to the masses. Finally, after three years of hearing all the noise from the fans in the Pacific Northwest saying, hey, bring the PLL here, we're bringing it. And we're bringing it indoors to the Tacoma Dome. So I think about the best of both worlds. If you can find an indoor venue for professional field lacrosse, it's going to bump. So I'm super excited to not only have exposure to the Seattle market where I played in indoor for a while, but also pull fans from Portland and even upwards of Vancouver, as that's a region that represents a lot of diehard lacrosse fans. So we will see you there. Into the playoffs, I mentioned Gillette Stadium for the quarters. Semifinals is gonna be at Washington DC at Audi Field. So that is a perennial favorite of ours. And then we're bringing the championship back to where we were in our first season in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So for all of you Philly fans out there, the championship is coming to you. Slap hands and celebrate. It's going to be a slugfest. Before we talk about Champion and Erica, let's grab a member, a leader from our ticket sales team to quickly just hop on and tell you all how you can get tickets. Jared! I knew the grinder was still here. Jared, you better know this by heart. <laughs> Come on in here. What are we doing? You're going to tell the people behind that lens, how they can get tickets and where they can get it and who to call and all that stuff. Take it away. Like for every venue or? Like for millions of people for every venue right now. For every venue, the best option is gonna be email tickets at premierlacrosseleague.com. We'll get you hooked up with somebody on our staff. We'll get you taken care of. Group discounts, 30% for eight tickets or more. We got you squared away. That was fucking great. That was really great. <laughs> and what can they get? They can get single day passes and they can get weekend passes now. Yep. They can get single day passes. They can get weekend passes. They can buy they a can suite. Get, yep. They can get suites. They can get field seats. They can get on the field. On the field. It's our version of courtside tickets to the PLL. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. We got all that. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk about Champion now. Two weeks ago, we announced that they're our official jersey partner of the PLL and sideline apparel partner of the PLL. Champion hits home for me for a couple reasons. One, its origins and roots are in Rochester, New York, which is upstate New York, 
very close to the Onondaga Reservation where the cross was first founded. So you can align with a brand that has not only deep history in North American roots, but is also close to the origination of Dehontik Wahes. Number two is now their headquarters in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is where my family's from. Did you know that? that. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, we love the Champion brand. They were fantastic as a partner last year, and now they're back on field on jerseys for the first time since they were rocking the NBA in the 90s during the Jordan era. For all of you Chicago Bulls fans, that C was on his jersey. That C is going to be on PLL jerseys. It was on some of the most legendary jerseys in college across history, from Johns Hopkins to Syracuse to Team USA. And those that actually know our students know that Champion was known for that mesh jersey. So I can't make any promises for 2022, but expect an incredible rollout for 2023 and, and some special stuff for 2022. So here we go, champion. Feel good about them. Feel really good about champion. All right, last bit of news here. Erica Nardini, who is the CEO of Barstool Sports, the first appointed CEO of Barstool Sports history. She took the company from a $50 million business to now 300 plus. She is on the board of the WWE. She worked at Yahoo as an executive at AOL, and she's, I think, the smartest mind around strategy and media in the world. Erica was in the back office with Mike and I. We were first strategizing around building the PLL against MLL at the time. Uh, and she has been an advisor and friend and mentor of mine for almost a decade. So we're really excited to have Erica on our board to drive value to this company at an official level. And she's the first female executive and our first appointed board member. You're gonna make the announcement? Okay, make you the make announcement. the announcement. So Erica is joining our board of directors. Yes, I am. Yeah. The only woman. The only woman, our first appointment though. The, as oh, lead, really? Right? Yeah, because. All right, I'll take that. Well, Erica, thank you for joining us. And thanks for having me on Token CEO, your podcast, where we went much deeper and talked about the roles together. So that's it. That's State of the League. There's a lot of information for you. It was a lot of fun this time. Uh, look out for more State of the Leagues as there's going to be some major announcements leading into training camp this May in Albany, New York. That's it. All right. Great job. Thanks, Brent. He's my favorite stick, man. Handcrafted Jack Johnson. He's also a singer. Making banana cakes. Yeah, there you cakes. go. North Shore native. My week. Huh? Big surfer Jack Johnson is. Yeah, he is. This is the Rabel 3 right there. It's USA. All right. Good work. Thank you. You too. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Oh. Wait. Links for tickets are in the description. And then comment uh, anything you want to know about the league for the next episode. I'll, I'll give you some answers. So let's just call it that. Q&A. <laughs>